What happened? Explain. Turn a strap off the plug. So that's not major. Yeah, it's major. Billy's doing the foot pedal. <laughs> I'm doing the pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not He's I love how there's just like creaks from him pumping. <laughs> it was like a percussion going Your on. Your ice cream's gonna melt, bro. Yeah, all over the head. Your legs are gonna melt. <laughs> All right, is everything going, Allison? Are we yeah. good? We're good, uh, I hope. Game on. The one and only Jimmy Dale in the house. His Jimmy, name's actually Tom Gunner. Jimmy Dangler. For people that don't know. Thank you, God, yeah. that there's only one. Way to, way to throw my Fed name out there, Thomas. <laughs> way to go, bud. His full name is Thomas Hoskinson. <laughs> What's your middle name, Thomas? Let's give better. It. Throw your social out there while we're at it. It's uh, <laughs> Beavis. Thomas Beavis. Thomas, Thomas Beavis. Beavis yep. <laughs> Thomas Snodgrass. Yep, so that means Billy's middle name would be Butthead, right? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Got it. So before we started this, we were talking baseball, and we were also talking uh, Billy's trying to find another car because he's trying to find something to put this 406 in that he's built. Eight. It's not a 406. It's not a Chevy motor. It's a 408. 408. Sorry. I'm sorry. 408. Same I don't thing. know my Fords. You told me when you started that process, you're going to put it in that green car. Yeah, but then I realized how nice the green car was, and I, I really don't want to mess it up. It's a nice little daily. Saves gas. You should put the Ford motor in a Chevy car, so that way everyone can freak out in the comments. Move your mic a little closer. It'll make no, people actually, watch actually, move the mic clear to the other side of the front <laughs> of the table. It'd be a lot less work to find a roller that already has all the good suspension components, maybe a cage, stuff like that. You know, you probably have to do what I did. You got to tighten all the little hardware. I'll tune it as we go along. Don't you worry. All okay. right. Good deal. It is what it is. Snodgrass. His mic's just... dangling. Listen, a once bit. we once we get some podcasts under our belts, we get some revenue coming in. We're gonna get. We're gonna do some upgrades. How much revenue does it take to turn this and just tighten the hardware? Well, it's the mics. They actually suck themselves, and then these are like twenty dollar Walmart deals. So. It looks official. You can buy a thousand dollar deal, and if you don't tighten the hardware, it's going to be the same pile of shit. Well, I mean, it's all good there on that front. We're just we all sound like we're talking into ten cans. Yeah, well, it is. What I'm it is, tuning though. it. All right. If my tune's anything You're like the Monte Carlo it. tune. It's going to run like it. shit. It's good. It's all good. All right. It is what it is. Yeah. At and this point, they're not watching it anymore. So. Right, they've already turned it off. Yeah. Nobody cares. Exactly. For so this sure. has been a uh, very highly anticipated podcast. Like really? Every time we do, uh, you know, comment who you want to see, it's uh, it's Jimmy Dale, it's Chief, it's, it's uh, you know. I can't believe I'm even in the same sentence as that guy, but yeah, that's cool. All right, I'll take it, because I'll probably say some dumb shit. Is that what they're hoping for, you think? I don't know. I think uh, you think they would expect that from you. Yeah, <laughs> you're Happy hot right now, man. Thanks. It's hot. Appreciate it. You gotta drop it like it's hot. Gotta drop it like it's hot. You know, part of being hot is not dropping a video for 12 days. That helps. And then uh, yeah, I was looking not at your, out merch. <laughs> I was looking on your your latest videos, and your last one was like two weeks ago. 12 days. All right. It's it not, says two weeks when I look at it. Damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't say anything because me and Allison we're slacking too, so I get it. Not some like uh, y'all have probably heard me say like they can't all be a banger, and I've told the old man that, and he's told me that right back. You know, hey, they can't all be a banger, but when you spend two three days editing a video, that if it's a banger, it comes together like butter, like no problem. Yeah. If it's not a banger, start to finesse, mm -hmm. you know. You yeah. start trying to make jokes out of something that's not funny. You try to, you're putting stuff in there that you're like, this is dumb. Or in my case, I try to teach people how to cheap street race and then go out and whiff it first round. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Jim. That's why I told you yeah, to put the music Jim. in there that makes fun of yourself. I did. I did put the music that makes because fun then of it, myself. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah, you suck, but at least it's funny. Like, yeah. it's entertaining to watch you suck that yeah. way. And then I was so butthurt, I didn't even put my first round loss in the video. Why not? Because I don't want to show people me getting destroyed. I didn't get destroyed. I actually Chief fumbled and Jackie the ball. put the shit in there. You don't see them hiding it. Well, I lose enough, all right? So don't worry about it. I'm actually a full-time grudge racer now. Not even YouTubing. Full-time grudge racer. So That's your pretty good. job title? Is that? Yeah. You changed your Facebook profile? Uh, going to. I made a LinkedIn working on it, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, full-time grudge racer. and I did a good job this weekend. I didn't even have a car to race. I grudge raced Rob's car with Rob driving it. We got paid fat. Feel sorry for those guys. This will probably come out. Pretty, that was a pretty eventful. Have you got that edited yet? Yeah, I actually. So look, when I get done, when the when the, when the clock strikes five, number one, I'm watching the damn Phillies game because y'all took too long. And number two, I got to go back and start. I rendered that video last night, and I got to go upload it. So. Hey, this is your job. You have to work before you can sit around and watch baseball. Okay, well, I'm going to watch baseball while we podcast then. There like, I'll we bet go. I'll Turn it on, buddy. i got to make sure I don't miss my flight out of this, Johnny. That too. 437. We, we're good. we got, we got more than enough time. Yeah. So. so what's this freaking Monte Carlo you picked up? Mm. Frosty. Frosty. That's what we're calling it. So icy, it's frosty. But I'm going to tell everybody the backstory on the frosty name. I came up with the idea, I want to call it Bandit. And I said, I want to call it Bandit because it, it kind of has the raccoon eyes and like the raccoon looks like he's got the Bandit, you know, kind of. Mm -hmm. And uh, Modale actually said, yeah, but it's so icy, it's frosty. And she said, and frosty was Big Dad's handle when he was an 18-wheeler driver. So her grandfather, who's no longer with us, his name's Big Pop. And uh, no, that's Big Dad, my bad. Big Dad is uh was an 18-wheeler driver for 100 years mm -hmm. and his handle was frosty you which, got the one and only frosty come on kick yeah. it back here come frosty on frosty coming down hot you know, and <laughs> more all this is rubber duck <laughs> <laughs> yeah rubber duck and frosty making moves so yeah frosty was his 18-wheeler handle so it makes perfect sense to name the car frosty and then you and me were talking about custom license plates uh for the car just burr mm -hmm. money nailed it so nailed really it. excited about the custom license plate that thing is nice man thank yeah. you i gotta say i mean taking a car from north carolina to ohio and then driving five four or five hours yesterday he flew from texas to north carolina bought this monte carlo and drives it sight unseen from north carolina to the jack's wax event saturday at trails 373 Spool rear end, turbo 350, no overdrive, small block Chevrolet, 3400 yep. on the freeway, get down. Get down the whole way. How many times did you get to fill up? Mm, I just kind of filled up when my butt went numb, not when the gas tank went <laughs> in. And uh, I had a bunch of people asking me at the jack swag saying, well, Jimmy, how'd your drive go, man? I said, oh, it went good, man. The only problem I had was high gas prices and numb butts. But other than that, I did good. And, and I mean... I wasn't hoping for, for more drama. The guy I bought the car from, his name was Scott Stone, and he he said, man, I ain't ever driven this car like that. Like, what you're trying to do, it ain't ever done it. So I, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm pretty confident it'll make it no problems. It's just how That's fast exactly you get how there. it went when I bought the yellow car. Oh, yeah? I went all the way to Illinois to get it. And they're like, eight hours. They're like, we don't know. We just, they had only driven it a couple hundred miles just around town. Yep, that was the same deal with this guy. they completely restored the car they did like, a good job when you put out this video 
I think it should do really well because I don't know why, but like lately, those kinds of videos, streetcar stuff in general, I feel like it's getting bigger and better. But the what? What, what, what? Streetcar stuff. He's he's oh, all on yeah, streetcar street stuff. stuff. I Says the guy with the E85 who didn't get to cruise to Malibu yesterday because it's on E85 and there's a you know, dude. E85 the Amish pumps. people up there don't fuck with E85. Okay. No, but that if just means gas or diesel. They don't have it out in the. The writing's box. on the wall, pops. It's time to take that thing off E85. I'm and working put it on, on my pump, pump gas right. setup. Okay. Yeah. And it's pump gas season. Follow me. Yeah, I got it. It is. It is pump gas season. It is pump gas season. We're talking about driving that Johnny all the way down to the 10 Soldiers Open House on the 10th. Come on. How are you going to make it if it's E85? I'll drive the Nova. I'll put it on pump gas. Yeah. That 427 in that Nova, the giveaway motor, ATM just sent me a brand new billet 950 gas carburetor put on it so I can switch it to pump gas and dial it in. Pump gas is cool. I like pump gas. The Nova's cool. I like the Nova, but it ain't the damn Malibu. It's not. You're just saying that now because you got a G body. Maybe because I'm a G body boy now. I may <laughs> I may be feeling that way. And now I'm over here like Billy. You should buy a G body, bro. You know what you need? Something you've already had. Yeah. <laughs> and sold. Right. It. Yeah, I own that Malibu at first. We have to pause because the batteries in this are fucking dead. That's great. Oh, Brand yes. new batteries. Wonderful, Thomas Snodgrass. Way to come through clutch. Hold on. Back. You yeah. said I'm hot, but I haven't had a video hit 100k yet. So you just, haven't? No. Not enough ass cheeks one. on your thumbnails. I don't. I think we fixed that thumbnails. last night, Thomas. Yeah, but you've already made it. Oh, <laughs> have I? Yeah. I mean, you've For made it though. there. Once you get 100k, it's so easy to get another 100k video. But getting to that first 100k video, it's tough. That's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah, and getting to 20,000 subs wasn't nothing. 25,000, nothing. From 29 to 30, brick wall. So look, before you guys started rambling about how he needs to put the E85 on gas and whatnot. I was going to say, these videos of people picking up cars, pro like somewhat project cars, yeah, and then driving them across the country, yeah, and then, like, that's the thing right now. Yeah, so the, I think that video should do really well. Thank you. The and Vice I'm Grip Garage style yeah, yeah, yeah. of, I bought this car sight unseen, I'm going to mm -hmm. drive it 550 miles right up into Rob's ass. Yeah, which exactly. Which didn't work out how I thought it was going to. <laughs> you said it was going to go I mean, 750. Well, bro, he told the guy I bought it from was like, yeah, it's been 715. And then I get there, it goes 850. Yeah. Ugh. Driver mod. <laughs> he like, said, this yeah. thing's never been 17. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then me and the old man driving it around today, and he's like, look, dog, I hate to break it to you, but this ain't going 17s. Maybe he meant on, on a motor. kit. That thing no, I never 17s had a kit downhill on a freaking hurricane. No, but it'll look good going eight fifties. Yeah. I'll tell you what. It was breaking next. We drove past a frozen custard stand and the poor three guys out front, all of them got neck injuries now, so Yeah. We'll go back there tomorrow and they're all gonna be in like neck collars. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Imagine when my fine ass old lady's driving around town there's gonna mm. be just a shortage of neck collars. I'm gonna have to start selling those on Jimmy. That's what Del you racing. should do. Yeah. Neck, neck collars. collars. Yep. I could sign them. That's a good idea. Snap that neck. Yep, that's going to snap them right <laughs> off. The hot blonde driving a Monty SS through Bowie, Texas. They're just going to be like, I mean, they were already shook by the look with the Mustang, but this thing. Shook this is on a whole nother level. Of it's shit. a whole nother level of shook by the look. What's the end goal yeah. with it? Bust I think we already got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go faster than 850. I mean, I was telling everybody, it's like, you should think of this car as kind of like the old man's when he first started working on it. Yeah. When he first started getting it going, mm -hmm. the 355, 700R, like, super pretty mild. He, he said it went tens. 790s. You said it went 790s, I I'd have think. to go back and look, but I think Do you it remember went what it went? Do you remember? I think that car went 790s. Yeah, it did. I think in the quarter it was going 1096. It went no, a no, seven. no, that was on a kit. It went oh. a 790. Did it? Yeah. Because I, I think Rob's car went like a, what, a mid seven and yours went a high seven? We're talking about all nuts. Yeah, on motor. I think it went like low 12s. What did it? I don't speak quarter mile. mile. 12 20s. Oh, I've yeah. never, I haven't made a quarter mile pass since I was in juniors. Yeah. You never made Shit's a quarter lame. mile pass in juniors. I didn't. Not in 1290? Bro. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm an idiot. He's never gone quarter mile racing. I've never. No, I've raced quarter mile once in her dart at an Edgewater oh, race. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Damn, juniors are fucking slow. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, when you're yeah. seven or twelve eight ninety in the you're, eighth, you're six and a half. Jesus. Well, so. your brother managed to put one on its lid. He did. How did you do that? Oh, Idiot. Here we go. Let's tell the story of Billy Flips the Junior. Yeah. All right. So this is my first time to trails. First time racing the Junior at trails. Whatever. Um, we go down to test on like a Friday night, and they're sending us all the way down to the last turnoff. Okay. <laughs> Saturday, get there, and they're making us turn at the first turnoff. So I'm not even worried about. It. Nobody told me. I'm not worried no, about stopping. I actually told you just do the same thing you did last night. You're good. Yeah. I told you that. So I'll take some blame, but I would have never guessed that yes. they were going to change So when that. you're in a 13-second eighth-mile junior dragster you and you got to go to the last turnoff at the track, you ain't worried about nothing. Like, I'm in there for two minutes going down the track. <laughs> yeah, you're I'm, in it. I'm so. in it. Like, so I get to the first turnoff, and this dude runs out in front of the car. And he's like telling people to turn off and stuff. Like he's he's the director of turn offs yeah. at the end of the <laughs> yeah. track. Yeah, he's probably and the same guy doing the like, station lanes. He's like weekend. directly in front of the car, like waving his arms. And so I like panicked and I like swerve right and then I about to hit the wall. So I swerve left and then I put it on its side. Oh. Still alive. How bad did you get how bad was the ass bust from dad? It wasn't. It, it wasn't, wasn't his fault. Okay. It was, I would have uh, really liked to get a hold of that moron at the track that tried to force him into the wall at 50 miles an hour when clearly he was going too fast. Did, was it Greasy that repainted your junior? Yeah. Was yeah. It? Yeah, you had to get it all repainted, and then I it, I was, yeah. it got hand down to me. I started racing it, and then you got in that purple purple junior. It was a half scale, but the blue one, the, the slower one, was uh, it was like a homemade deal, but then after he wrecked it, it had them little teeny tiny, like, airplane wheels on the front they're yeah. like three inches yeah. and i'm like those gotta go because it bent the axle when he rolled it so i took it down to pat cronenbetter down in baltimore and he built a whole new front axle for it set up for the larger mm -hmm. life style life size yeah wheels life size. this is probably the same guy who was telling me and rob that we couldn't race this weekend because i was in lane one tell him about this and no 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 that no, kid's no, no, that no. kid's a newbie no no, 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 no not the kid the kid, the oh. kid was cool as hell yeah the yeah. kid was just like i'm doing what my boss is telling yeah, me yeah but so, yeah. his boss was the guy who was further back in the lanes and mm -hmm. me and rob are right next to each other you know like right behind each other we pulled into the what we thought was the vip lane turns out nope that's just the dingus lane so <laughs> you got two dinguses trying to race each other and I, I get to the front and i tell him i'm racing the guy behind me and he's like no you're not i'm like well uh, yeah yeah i am and no you're not pull in right there and i'm like nope and i sit there he's like pull in there now I was like, all right, so I pull in there. Rob is directed to pull right behind me. He tells Rob the same thing. Nope, you're not racing that guy. And we go up to the front. We tell that kid, we're like, hey, man, I'm going to race Rob. You know, Jimmy versus Rob type of deal. Yeah, so run content. two out of our lane and then run two out of the next lane. Right, yeah, right. And the, the kid who's running the lanes at the front, he's like, yeah, it's no problem. And then he's like, oh, I can't do that. My boss is telling me I'm not allowed. He's just oh, trying okay. not to get in trouble with yeah. his boss. We're not trying to put him in anything. And then no. I look at Tommy. I'm like, yeah, Tommy, I got a problem here. And Tommy turns around. And by the time he turns around, the guy in the tower is like, they're good. Do whatever they want. They're good. <laughs> and so thanks for just putting your presence on things. I, well, I, I like to think I have that kind of presence. I, don't, I think I probably you do. not, but... Uh, you got the camera? Well, I had the big visual. camera out, and they were probably like, oh. Yeah, yeah, they let him run. But the guy at the back who was like, absolutely not. You are not running that According guy. to bracket racing, subsection three <laughs> times one, A plus yeah. B. It's You're not allowed five, to do that. Subsection three, uh, paragraph A says, <laughs> all cars that go underneath the tower must race in the way they come underneath the tower. <laughs> no exceptions. No exceptions. <laughs> so, yeah, Trails is an awesome facility yeah. but the guys who work there a little tight a little tight you know? <laughs> well, it's a bracket it is a bracket racing facility they would never put up with the shit we pull at yellow belly like i was no. telling him when i was uh 2017 i built my first real hot rod it was a ford granada six liter turbo 400 and like y'all been to yellow belly you know the line is all the way down the street when it's popping off right i drive this thing all the way from fort worth right so 20 miles in a <laughs> real hot ass race car it's 115 degrees outside my ass comes flying straight through the exit right they got the exit of the track open here comes jimmy straight through it straight into the vip parking lot 
pull right up on top of the fuel station stuff because you can't pull up there now but there used to be a ramp you could pull up there to the fuel shed part pull up there park fire me up a doobie just stand there for a second dab my boys up a little bit and then walk over there to the you know to the uh entrance and pay my way in They're like hey you you can't come in that way i was like oh you said this is the you know world's biggest outlaw track and now you're mad we're doing outlaw stuff i was like here you know here's your little five extra dollars you just keep that you know the lady, <laughs> lady's just sitting there with my money like <laughs> like have a good night and i walk up you know what i mean the, <laughs> They could, they would flip out at trails if if we had that kind of enthusiasm. Oh yeah, man. They, they would... wouldn't be able to hold it together. Yeah, you'd be banned. Yeah, banned. <laughs> That's funny. Banned. Banned. Yeah, yeah. For life. <laughs> they look like they banned people around there. That guy in the station lane is like, look right here in the bracket racing handbook. It says. <laughs> You have to do it. Where's your dial in? <laughs> Yo, the kid, the dude had the nerve to ask me. He's like, well, get your marker out and just put this number on the window. I'm like, get my marker out? What? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, your uh, your polish marker. I'm like, your dial no, in, man. I ain't got no damn <laughs> dial in marker. You know what I mean? They're so used to bracket yeah, racing. Yeah. That somebody like me shows up. They're just like, oh. We uh, went out there the other day and Tommy forgot to get his time slip. I said, you get your slip? Oh, they're giving time slips? <laughs> it's been oh, so long times. since it's been so long since he stopped to get a time slip. Well, I don't need that. I gotta drag you right here. This break is brought to you by Nitrous Express. You guys can use code OMG, code SRC, code Gym2, or code Magic for ten percent savings at checkout. NitrousExpress.com. Solid. Solid. Nailed Damn. it. Damn. Nailed it. How do you do that off the top of your head? I used to knock How are door you so to door smooth with it? when I when I was. Right out of high school, I had a buddy call me. He said, "Hey, man, I'm making a hundred grand a year. We're knocking door to door in, in Glen Burnie, Maryland. You should come up here. We should knock doors together." Mm -hmm. And this is right when Verizon FiOS and AT and T Uverse, all the fiber optic internet was happening. And so, by, so many people are sick of their cable company. Mm -hmm. They're like eager to sell, yeah. you know, to to buy stuff. So Chomping I just, bits. yeah, I just. We'll knock, knock a door and, you know, talk to him a little bit. Bro, first week, nothing. Second week, nothing. Ugh. Third week, my dad sold high-end women's clothing his whole life. So I call him and I'm like, Dad, I, I can't get a sell out here. He's like, I promise you, the next guy that opens the door fucked up because he opened it for the wrong motherfucker today. He said, you got this. And I walked over there, sold that guy. And then sold like five more people on that street. And I kept telling him. Yeah, Bill at the end of the street just got signed up. We're going to do his next Tuesday. You guys should probably just knock him out the same day. And they're like, oh, yeah, what plan did Bill get? And it's just kind of up in the Joneses. So then once I got to that point, it was like, well, he oh, got okay. the silver, but you could get the gold. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Bill's a little tight on money right now. He could only swing the oh, silver. Oh, was he? Right? Really? He was. Well. Hey, honey, Bill's tight on money. Make sure when you go down to do Bill's. You tell him I got the gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. And just trying to read people and pick up on people's, uh, atten you know, their their, their mannerisms, their vibes, being able to read their vibes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, man. It's a people thing. It's a people thing. You're no, a I, great talker, a great people person. Thanks, yes. And I don't know if you mean to be, but, like, we're kind of introverted. You know, that's kind of – but you're very yeah, extroverted. Very. Normally, yeah. I'm scared of extroverted people, like – but uh, I will nice admit, guy. when I after waking up at 5 a.m. on Saturday morning and driving for 11 hours straight off in Jack's Wax, when the crowd of drunks was there, I took a big deep breath before I got out of the car. Mm. What's up, baby? How you yeah. doing, man? Good to see you. Bye. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm Jimmy Dale. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you baby, get let's get it. Right? And I put that show on, boy. There's nothing you can do but to do it. And then... Yeah. Jack's out there. Let's shoot some t-shirts. Dude, Thank Jack you. loves you to death. Jack is going to... Jack's a lot like you guys. You're going to be yeah. Jack in 30 years. Like I'll You guys that. are the same type of energy. I told I told old man and Vicky last night, I said, the biggest compliment of the whole weekend, Tommy looked at me and was like, you're a young Jack Miner. I was like, damn, that hits. Yeah, me and Jack both... I, I was talking to somebody and I was like, man, I, I know exactly how Jack feels because that first Small Tire Gangsters... I mean, y'all saw me. I sat at the front gate all day long, 
and thank every single person that came. I thank every single person that came to Small Tire Gangsters. Thank you so much for watching my bullshit on YouTube. Thank you so much for coming to support my race. Without you and your support, without you guys, this is not possible. Totally not possible. And so it's an awesome life we get to live, all four of us. Like, we got it made, dog. We got it so made. So he kind of convinced you to try to try and start a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. I mean, the writing was on the wall. I kind of knew I had to. If I mean, we're not going to talk about my previous employment, but I mean, <laughs> some of these guys probably know already what's up. And like that just wasn't a sustainable lifestyle. While it was, you know, cool when I was younger, it was like, oh man, I'm the dude, you know. Uh, it wasn't sustainable and it came with its own risk, you know. Mm -hmm. And those risks started to affect my family more and more and more. And it was kind of like, like I said, the writing was on the wall and there's something you guys have probably already heard us talk about, but old man said, every day you don't work on Jimmy Dale racing or Jimmy Dale. Like every day Jimmy Dale just fades into the nothingness is at least $500 thrown down the drain. I'm like, I, I just don't want to work for anybody at the end of the day. I think we all have the same goal. I want to be my own boss. I want to do whatever I want to do every single day. We didn't want to dig ditches anymore. And yeah, y'all didn't want to dig ditches anymore, and I didn't want to drive around in circles anymore and risk yeah. my freedom. Yeah. And so, I mean, it just, uh, that, and then having that drive from not wanting to dig ditches is what makes you work so hard. What makes you say, you know what, let's pack all this podcasting crap up, drive across town and sit there and have a conversation that we've already had 15 times in <laughs> private, but let's do it in, you know, a podcast situation. So there's, there's a, there's a little piece of this that I'd like to talk about. Oh, let's lay it on them. You ready? Yeah. When you first started doing the Jimmy Dale thing, mm -hmm. it's like the people that are around you on a regular basis they're like, yeah, yeah, Jimmy Dale, Jimmy Dale. But then when Jimmy Dale starts to take off, it's like there's a lot of people around you that want to pull you back. Totally. Yeah. Because they don't like the fact that Jimmy Dale is Jimmy Dalen. Yeah, like, yeah. Because, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I'll give you an ex example. Sure. We talked about this a long time ago. But, like, right on Jump Street, from the rip, day one, you were straight up with me about what was going on you know like dude totally. I, I want to change my life oh right? yeah, yeah 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 we're gonna talk about this stuff. no 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 just a little bit all i'm right. just saying no, all, no, right, no. all right go ahead just gonna dabble in it yeah we're just gonna right. dabble, Let's dabble. so right off the front you know everybody knows i'm pretty straight laced and just i don't deal with no bullshit you know and i'm pretty strict with my kids always have been they're Definitely. good kids but um Kids. Oh, no, I know he's tricked. All right, come on. Uh, so I remember, <laughs> you know, when you got cracked that time, they got on blue collar and said, Oh, uh, you know, they were trying to divide, like me and you were getting tight. Yeah, so we were getting tight, and they had, they knew that you and me were together. I think we were yeah, coming yeah, back we were, from a yeah, race. We I don't even know what race we were coming back from. We were in a while. We were coming back from something. It was all over the internet that we were jimmy dalen together whatever you want to call it we were bullshitting and somebody drops that and like tags you and like you know you know what they're trying to do yeah and at the time i don't think that you picked up on it immediately what they no were trying i didn't to do. No, i just i actually mentioned to you i was like you know what they're trying to do they they're trying to get you to turn on me now because i'm very naive and in, in some aspects so what yeah. they like what they did was what the, what was it your your uh, your picture or something like yeah let's just call it my picture yeah he had a picture <laughs> there was but, a uh, picture we're not too proud of out there with, boys <laughs> with details of his uh, situation yeah yeah he got jammed up he caught a charge right and happens on the big jobs happens on the big yeah. job oh it was a but, big job all right <laughs> but i think that i think a lot of people based on the reaction to that post thought oh when this hits old man's gonna kick his ass to the curb uh-huh it's gonna be on like donkey kong and then you played right along and you said wrote him out of the will <laughs> yeah that's it jimmy's written out of the will <laughs> and i think at that moment they thought yeah oh yeah you know Fuck you, Tom, or fuck you, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, because I did have people, I mean, 
the guy who did that, the guy who shared all that stuff, was the same guy who messaged me, don't forget where you came from, mm-hmm. you know, we'll be here when you get back down to earth, you and know. And they want you back down there. That, dude, kicking and screaming to get me back there. Yeah, praying so. on his downfall. Yeah, praying on his freaking Straight downfall. every day, waking up. Smoking a stogie and then telling God, man, I hope Jimmy fails. If there's anything you can do today, just make sure Jimmy fails. <laughs> that sucks, dude, to know that there's people out there. Like, we dealt with it when we first got oh, yeah. started. It's not nearly oh, we as still bad. Deal with it. Well, yeah. I don't think it's there's nearly. There's always going to be negative people out there. Uh, I get yeah. those, you know, I got a guy last week from high school. He messaged me, hey, how you been, man? Famous, huh? Hmm. Like, oh. Yeah, good to hear from you too. Hey, are you interested in any of these vehicles I have for sale? <laughs> you know, you've got a bunch of money now. I'm like, oh, uh, really? Uh, <laughs> shit. When? <laughs> when did I get a bunch of money? What? <laughs> oh, we can even talk about that. Your boy hasn't even made a Walmart salary off of YouTube. Mm-mm. Not even. No, but so your investment, hard. your time investment, and everything like it'll stall. It, it'll start compiling. And oh, all it's the his more brand. Time. It's really not about the money. It's about freedom. Yeah. It's yeah, that too. that's true. Freedom is worth more than any dollar. Says the guy with plenty of them. You know, no offense. But. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Check my bank account. <laughs> no, I mean. We're pocket watching today. Yeah, yeah. Let, let all the pocket watchers. That's a delay of game. You know, that's a <laughs> penalty. 15-yard penalty. Pocket, pocket watching. watching. <laughs> yeah. Holding <laughs> on the offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pocket so, watchers are the worst. That is the worst, dude. Okay, so here's the tough thing for me is I am the most behind as far as like like you know, me and Allison we got our own place, we got a garage. I've I'm building my own car, my my truck, like I get by, I'm doing stuff I want to do. I have some freedoms. They're they're a farther ahead than I am. But I think everyone thinks I'm on the same salary as them, like build a shop salary. So like anytime I try and do anything to get ahead, everybody's like, well, what do you need that for? Like, uh, Tommy uh, does the waffle. Nobody will buy spots. And I, Tommy will tell you it's because people think that I'm just coming for money or whatever, you know, whatever you just said a second ago. But the truth is you, you did what you were taught when you were a kid and you just started working harder, you know, because then... Right about the time you, we had this conversation and you tried your waffle is the time you leaned right back into the podcast. And now, look, everybody's enjoying the shit out of this podcast. You've had some great guests. It's going to only continue to snowball from here more and more and more. And I think the supplemental the income that you were like, hey, I need this extra income. Well, you just created it for yourself, you know? Yeah. Tommy, <laughs> here's a scam. Things look like they're pretty rough over at SRC. Tommy's. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's dipping Falcon down hadn't won in a while. <laughs> That's yeah. the Falcon's problem. Falcon's down. Falcon down. Yeah. Falcon ain't uh, won in a while. <laughs> you know how many times I've been down to like six cars and I start thinking, this is I can start ordering some parts for my truck. <laughs> and I go and fuck it all up. I get down to semifinals. All of a sudden I got to race Jeff Thomas. I'm getting ready to go in the finals. I'm like, first of all, I, I weasel my way into $1,000 down to four cars. Because I talked to everybody and I was like, well, we could split, do a little bit of split. And there you go. $1,000 Good at least job. that we made it this far. Because I... Anything can happen. I lucked my way into the fucking finals there. So I was happy to get anything. Or the semifinals. And I raced Jeff Thomas. He goes 580 and I lose by three cars. So... But, yeah. Always split, Thomas. Always <laughs> split. Well, one day, maybe when I'm not... Yeah. Tom one round on. at a time. Run your own race. I know. That's I start getting excited, about. though. I'm like, man. Get close to the money. I might be able to what start. What do you ordering. need to finish the truck? Let's touch on that for a second. Uh, so I got my. You took my transmission, my four L eighty, up to Dion Vickers. Done. So that's lines, done. Transmissions. Uh, he's working on it. Once I get that back, that's the last big piece. I got to get a converter from five hundred one. Um, got to start wiring. Um, so what parts do we need to buy? Well, I need all your. You said you're gonna send some stuff from Snow. Yep, so that Triple same fuel system. Pump, fuel I really rails. expected you to do it before I did it, but it <laughs> worked out that way. I know. Uh, so the same triple in tank pump that we put in the blue turbo car that I got, I'm supposed to put Modale in. Mm-hmm. We're going to put that in your turbo truck. Yeah. That'll be sick. Yeah. Yeah, so Snow will do all the fuel stuff. And mm-hmm. then what else do you need to buy stuff parts-wise? 
Well, you got two turbos? Get rid of those AIDS wheels that you got for the front of it. Well, the front's still five on five, so we're kind of stuck with that. No. You have injectors? No, I'm or I today was payday, so I'm gonna order injectors. Dude, anybody with injectors the out rivers. there, hit up Thomason. Some Bosch two tens. Yeah. Um converter, transmission gets back, I start wiring, I gotta do brake lines. I gotta fix my bed, my bed my my actual the fiberglass step side bed, like it's fiberglass so it don't rust, so that part's fine. But some of the bed rails, I got to replace those. So that'll be a whole welding job I got to do. Tommy, I don't feel like... Tommy just needs to work on it. It's all I hear. Yeah. He I've got need... most of the parts. You I don't just... even need any more parts. I... Holla at my boy over here. All right. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. I'm going to have to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. No. Whoa, what's wrong with. Oh, we can't even talk about Whoa. It. Fuck. I wish I would have known that. We should have. We need to have a checklist here, boys. Yeah. All right. It's okay. No, we won't talk about it. We're back! Everybody, <laughs> we're back! <laughs> Come on! That's all the no flies. What zone. were we talking about before I put my foot in my mouth there, boys? I don't know. Were you always like this? Like, even in high school? Uh, no, in, um... In high school, I just kind of followed my buddies around and kind of did what they did and fucked up a lot and done did dumb shit and... My parents were always like, no, you're not going to race car. No, absolutely not. And, you know, oh, you're going to the track? You Why know, did my, you want to race cars? My older brother took me to Pro Mods. I was probably 12 years old. And I looked up to my older brother like nobody else in the world. I thought he was the coolest dude on the planet, right? And he took me to Pro Mods at Kennedale, Texas Raceway. It's closed now. And Frankie the Madman Taylor... Galen Smith, the Texas Bounty Hunter, these cars, and they're just like, they're pro mods, bro. The real pro mods. Eighth mile pro mods. And like, I remember watching one go 200 miles an hour in the eighth. I'm just like, what? This dude, Doug <laughs> Rooster, Reister, Rooster, Doug Rooster. And at the time, it was called Linmar Motorsports, but Doug had like the world's fastest nitrous pro mod. So just donkey dick flames out the side. And I'm 12 years old. I'm like sitting like, oh my gosh, this is exi <laughs> this exists? I was hooked, right? Mm -hmm. So from 12 to maybe 13, 14, every single Sunday, I would call my older brother Saturday like, hey, we're going to the track tomorrow, right? And he would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would take me to the track when I was young, you know, and we would never miss pro mods. And uh, I got into high school. And then eventually you find the the guys who, you know, know about racing too. And, like, I found a buddy, and his dad had a 540 big block Nova. And we became buddies, you know, so that way I could go racing with them. Yeah, you know, wait I, a minute. Didn't you, you told me once you started with a ricer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but remember, my parents are like, no, race cars under yeah, right, any right, circumstances. Right, right. So I conned my parents into buying me a B18C1. It's called a GSR hatch. So it was a GSR swapped EG Honda Civic hatchback. It didn't look like a race car. No. It them. looked like an egg. Yeah. And Italian. my dad's like, it's got a fart can on it. <laughs> you know, and it did. <laughs> <laughs> and it had all the bells and whistles and... Everything you could get from that one aisle at AutoZone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had the underclothes under the dash for sure, bro. I had that. And uh, that car was really fast. Like, there was this... There was a... Uh, a bunch of Mustangs and stuff that went to my school and my Civic was fast enough to beat the Mustangs. Like my best friend going through high school had a Fox body Mustang, five liter purple hatch, just like, you know, magic is now. And, uh, there was an automatic car had, uh, it was bone stock at the time and I would drag his ass in my Civic. Well, his dad found out now his dad is the guy who built magic Johnson, who I had, Oh, Two decades later, you know, a wow. hundred years later, I buy He's Magic like, Johnson no, from his happen. dad, <laughs> right? Here's that my Civic outran his son's Fox Body Mustang that had Warrior Centerline Warrior wheels. It's the hottest wheels when I'm in high school. Like, if you had Warrior skinnies on your car, your dick just grew two inches. <laughs> you know? They were that cool. And, like, everybody knows the regular center lines, but if you guys don't know what Warriors are, look up Centerline Warrior Wheels. They're hot. So, he's got Centerline Warriors, baddies on the back, 
and we raced a hundred times and every single time I just run right off on him in this little Civic and his dad caught wind of it and so Christmas was, you know, it's probably this time of year and Christmas came and this kid got gears, BBK shorties. Uh, no, BBK cold air intake, shorty headers, uh, like monster tack, right? It's automatic yeah. car shifts itself, but monster tack. <laughs> <laughs> he got all the hot boy parts for a box body Mustang, and he drove out my life. I couldn't hang from that point forward. But, I mean, he did get $3,000 for the parts. Ah, whatever, whatever. So, yeah, he beat me, and uh, it, then it was like, man, wish my parents would let me have a, Fox body Mustang. Fox body Mustang, you know. <laughs> At the time, if you had anything with an LS1, there's a, a guy back home, his name's Christy Arm, and everybody knows Big Chris in North Texas. Big Chris does all the drag racing alignments in DFW. And he's aligned every vehicle I own, trucks, cars, all of them. And so uh, Big Chris had an LS1 Camaro with like 150 shot. Bro, I don't care what Fox Body Mustang you had, you ain't hanging with an LS1 with a 150 shot. And when, I, when I'm in high school, this is 2005, 6, 7, 8, you know, around that mid-2000s time. And uh, so I did the math, and I was like, I'm going to get a Camaro. Like, this could happen, you know. I could get a Camaro. Z28 doesn't have to be a fancy one, but if I get an LS1 Camaro, then I'll be set. I'll be busting everybody's ass. Yeah, my parents laughed at me. Didn't happen. Turns out my dad just went and bought a new truck. <laughs> yeah, so the, the money that I thought was going to go to the Camaro just went to my dad's new truck, which, yeah, whatever. Yeah, happens. People have probably heard that and I was a Honda kid when I was in high school and stuff. And so through the relationships that I met in high school, uh, that's how I got into drag racing more. Then I was already going on Sundays and, you know, pro mods and stuff with my older brother. And uh, it, the original question was, have I always been like this? Yeah. Like, uh, no, it's the answer. But at some point, you realize these guys are just trying to hold me down, you know? I had a guy uh, who's passed away now, but he said, hey, uh, Riley, you need to stay in your place. That's what he told me. And I was like, man, I just started dating Mo Dale at the time. And Billy Dale's like two years old. She's living in an apartment where, you know, me and all my pothead buddies are all split in the uh, house, you know. We're getting by, but, like, I'm sleeping on an air mattress. This isn't, you know, this isn't any way I want to live my life. And uh, You're like Seth Rogen and knocked up. Straight up, bro. <laughs> like, hanging out on the couch every day, playing video games. Yeah. People coming and going, oh, what's up, dude? You know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can just, tell that that definitely happened. <laughs> totally, bro. Totally. Yeah, at one point I, I even Googled like uh, Forza Drift competitions. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like that, that meme, we gotta figure out how to make money off of this. <laughs> it's just too good. <laughs> you know, I was trying to figure out how to make money off of Forza Drift competitions. It was like Forza 1 or 2, drifting was hella hot. And man, me and my boys were good at it because we <laughs> sat there all day and did that shit. So me and Tommy used to do the same thing. Yeah, we we were real cold with it, and I thought, man, maybe we can make money off this. <laughs> Turns out there's no such thing, and uh, <laughs> at least not at the time. Maybe nowadays some kid can make a million dollars being Forza Drift kid. But... Well, the streamers are making all the money now. The video yeah, game streaming. I wish I would have started streaming back then. You know, I probably would have been fat and ugly, but whatever. Carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel. Yeah, with my paws. So, really, uh, we were talking about it this weekend. The, so, the couple who won the Drive the Malibu experience, you know, they were in town this weekend. And even you and Vicky apparently all have, like, a similar story about how, really, you were just a scumbag. And then you met Vicky, and she kind of cleaned you up a little bit and kind of stood you up on, come on. Get up there, you know, and, and that was Modell for me, for sure. Like, I, I tell people all the time, when me and Modell got together, I had $1,500 to my name and a 95 Thunderbird, you know, and I still got the 1500 bucks and got a 88 Monte Carlo SS. <laughs> Way better. But, yeah, she, it's, it's crazy what, you'll find this out soon, what having a kid can do to motivate you, 
insane what it'll do to you. I mean, it happened to your dad. Yeah. You know, like the motivation you get from having a kid or having an old lady who believes in anything you want to do wholeheartedly and will support you to no end. Even when you're wrong, she'll still be like, nope, get in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's... When I found out I was having one, I definitely kicked things in a different, you know, another gear. We didn't yeah. have this the barn yet. We didn't have. Yeah. There was a lot that needed to get done, and I was like, then, you know, we had just done our first giveaway for that Mustang, and I didn't know how it was gonna go, but. Yeah, you definitely got to kick things in a different gear. Life yeah. changes quick. Yeah, it, you say you have to, but you don't even have to. You, something inside of you changes right and then i tell people all the time like once that kind of clicked in my head like with them my old lady and my kid it was like bro i don't care if we were boys back in the day get the fuck out of my way like i'm here to win all right and that's kind of the same mentality i have today is just like i mean i want to win at life i don't necessarily have to win every race because i'm slow but <laughs> it's all right you know, I figure out a way to win a lot. Car's not slow by any means. Oh, well, in small tire. Are we going to get into this? Are we going down that road, Billy? But it's not a small tire car. It's not a small tire no. car. No. It's a street car. It's a purposely built daily driver that I don't daily. It's a, it's a street race. car. It's a street car, yeah. But, I mean. It is a street car. Yeah. When it was when it was put not together, a daily. it's not a daily, but no. it is a street car. But the Monte Carlo is a daily. It's just. The Monte is absolutely a daily. When Magic was built, it was built to fit a class called Texas True 10 5. And so in the early 2000s, the class Texas True 10 5 was like, must have full interior, must have a DOT tire, all this, all these things that what we call daily driver now. So like, I've won eight events this year. Pretty solid. Not too bad. And I think a lot of people could learn something from you as far as that goes. You don't have to have the fastest small tire Mustang in the world. There's a million cars that sit just like yours, but they... They could probably find a spot in a class a little lower, you know. Yeah, counting eight. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> no, I don't think his car has like full interior and everything that does it. Uh, I'm sure if you motivated him enough, yeah. talk some shit, he'd probably make it happen. Right. Yeah, he's a pretty motivated guy. But some uh, upholstered Kirkies is most of the time like I don't know what the rules are down down there, but like any street car class, just like. Have upholstered upholstered Kirkies, like seat covers. Seat That's covers all you need. Must have two padded front you, seats. Yeah, you don't even need back seats. You don't even yeah. you know, hey, half hey, the time. Hey, don't be talking about back seats. I don't have back seats either. Oh, well. see, that's why it's yeah. a it's a street car. Well, it's a street car, and, and let's let's to my defense, why I don't have a back seat is because when they put the cage in the car, it was the early two thousands, and in the early two thousands, if you had an X bar in the back. You know, this is like triple H, you know, doing this thing, you know. So if you had the X bar in the back of your car. Had to been fast. Oh, three times cooler, four times maybe. You know? I don't even know how you were getting races with that. Oh, yeah, and then nowadays. Tenet windows. Tenet windows, yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, so if you had the X bar, you were hot shit back then. And nowadays, we all know that's a dumb way of doing stuff. That doesn't actually add anything or help anything at all other than just deleting your back seat and getting taking a bunch of room at one point i thought i was being smart i took a bunch of ankle weights and i hung them on the bars you know on the top because i was like okay if i get the weight high it'll be better and it'll uh but wait you were on to something <laughs> he was he just didn't know it i mean i may have been on to something but the truth is my chassis just doesn't care and like i have stock wheel tubs so with a 275 it fits but it doesn't ship, if you will, you know what I mean? If I start hanging a bunch of weight in the back of it, it just scrapes when I leave. So. Yeah, we've seen that. Oh, <laughs> we were, oh yeah. We were just together, right? Yeah. Uh, we went look. for that cruise, and I'm like, yeah, Bill, you're good. Jump in with me, no problem. Dude, we get down the street. Yeah. It's just smoking out the right rear, disgusting. My, my yellow car does the same thing, and it's got 26 tens, and yeah. it's not even lower in the back, so. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of racing to do? Street racing, no prep, like something you did at KD? All right, hold on. This just died finally. She's getting new batteries. All right. What are they, double A's? Yeah, they're double A's. She got them Kroger brand ones, and they suck ass. What the hell? Yeah, dude, they're brand new batteries. Damn Kroger brand batteries. Get the fuck out of this video. Doesn't matter.
Thank you. Who's taking you to the airport? Yes. What time is it? 520. Oh. 26. We're good. We still it's got right at the bottom of the sack. Alright. And you want a, you want a score update? Yeah, give me a score update. Zero to zero, bottom of the first. Oh. Philly's got the ball. Obviously. <laughs> He's the got bottom. the ball. Because <laughs> <Philly's just> <laughs> it's the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Philly's, Philly's up to bat, bottom of the first. But Arizona didn't score shit in the top of the first. So right. that should make you feel New good. New batteries were good. Bet. So, what kind of racing? Do you like to do the most? Is it street racing? Is it no prep? Is it the track yeah. shit? Is it grudge racing? Like the race at KD? That well, was... you remember we were talking about my previous employment uh, earlier on. Mm -hmm. That that keeps me off the street racing thing. Mm -hmm. It's not worth the squeeze for me. We got a bunch of no trailer stuff that happens back home. You know, I, I raced on that dumb show that we all don't watch. Straight up, nobody watches that shit. But I raced on that, and uh, you know, oh, you're street. Uh. Uh, I don't really care to street race. Like, even this past week, we had that street race. I was shaking my head the whole entire time I was there. Just like, this is not smart. If it ain't organized and yeah. professional, it's a waste of fucking But then time. I went to, like, Limpy Street Race, and I'm hooting and hollering and having a good old That's right, time. That's right, because it's probably organized. Like, super organized, good security. Yeah. You know, him and Poland are running it. So, like, I got mad trust in the guys that are pulling it right. off. Yeah. And, you know, a, a random guy just started driving down the road. You know, they stopped the cars. They pulled the car over to one side. No one's hooting and hollering or freaking out. No guy's doing burnouts or starting his car in gear. And then, oh, you know, nothing crazy. Everybody that's drop. there is kind of, they're not green, so to speak. But, yeah, this guy starts pulling down the road. And then he realizes there's a bunch of people in the street. And he stops. And... Pulling, standing, pulling, standing, pulling, sitting in the middle of the fucking road, right? And he's telling the guy, come on, come on. I said, hey, pulling, get out of the damn road. So I'm trying to get this guy to come on. I said, yeah, but you're so goddamn ugly, you're scaring him. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, anybody who knows me, anybody who watches the Jimmy Dale channel knows that me and my best friend, Michael Pullen, are constantly giving each other a hell of a hard time, you know? And uh, he pulled into the gut the other day and, you know, he's like, yeah, they let me in for free. They must have known I was hanging out with your ugly ass. And he's like, oh, God, just did another video. I was like, you think I get a tax return for having such an ugly buddy? Or uh, <laughs> is that a write-off? So, yeah, we were always giving each other a hard time. Poland's you know? the best. Yeah, Poland's the, Poland's the shit. How'd you meet Poland? Through Nitrous Express, or did you guys know each other no, before No, through that? racing. Yeah, so through the no-prep scene around where we're at, um... Poland was crewing a car called Joe Dirt. It's actually the S10 with the turbos in the bed. Mm -hmm. And it's owned by a guy named Mike Winder. And Mike Winder has got a real successful shop in Graham, Texas. And that's where Poland's from is Graham, Texas, middle of nowhere. And Poland would hang out there and work on the truck and crew the truck. So, like, he was, like, the crew chief for the Joe Dirt truck. And we became buddies, you know. And cutting up at the races and next thing you know we're hanging out and we're at the same races every week and then it just snowballed from there i got the call to go to street outlaws fastest in america and I, i've told this story a hundred times but i didn't have a way to get there i didn't have enough money to go mm -hmm. i didn't have a trailer that would make it across the country nothing so i call every one of my buddies and i'm like hey you want to go to Street Outlaws? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I want to go to Street Outlaws. I think that's what everybody knows. Yeah, I think you're right. And then they tell you, you're only allowed two crew members. All right, okay, so if I bring this two in at one time, I can bring another two in? Or is that... Uh... So JoJo went out. JoJo came. He brought his mom and his dad, right? We split the Airbnb. So that way I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm living in Vegas for two weeks for about... A, $50 to $100 a day, you know, okay. Oh, there's a $5 buffet, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. super broke, trying to scheme it all together, you yeah. know. And calling all my buddies out, so Poland flew out. And Poland hung out for, you know, he's supposed to be there originally for like two, three days. And then the third day, he's like, oh, I'm going to reschedule my flight. 
So he stays for another day or two. He's like, yeah, we're just going to my flight sets for another two days or so. And Poland is like uh, the kid off a of Vegas vacation where <laughs> he's the kid off a of Vegas vacation. I put a dollar in, I want a car. I put a dollar in, I want a car. You know, so Poland's there. He's been there like five days. He's got $3,000 more than he came with. And he's just like fucking it off. You know what? We went to a strip club pool and it's like, yeah, I'm going to smoke this blunt in here. I'm like, yeah, dog, they're not going to let that ride. And he's like, watch <laughs> this. He hands old girl like $500. He's like, I need ones. So they bring back a pile of ones like this big, bro. Oh and he fires this blunt up. And we're all in there. I can't tell you who was all in there because, you know, their moms, <clears throat> milk and type of moms, may be upset. <laughs> and, uh, and the milk type moms may be upset about this story. So we're all in there. We're all here to holler. And, and Poland's passing this blood around. And we're all choshed in there. There's strippers are just everywhere. And, and every time the security guard comes, they look at Poland. And they go, hey, you can't. And he reaches down and he grabs a f- pile of ones. and just <laughs> like that. <laughs> the strippers just woo. The security guard walks right back off, dude. I'm telling you, he probably did that three or four times. Oh, my God. And, uh, Poland gets rolled off by this six seven black chick, looks like <laughs> Serena Williams. What? And yeah, oh yeah. So Poland oh gets God. rolled off by this black chick, looks like Serena Williams. Hey, bro. put me back there. <laughs> <laughs> they can't she's, do anything. She's rolling him off, you know. Not really. Pol- something about Poland is, bro. If you push this man's chair, he will smack your ass, bro. Like, I probably would too. Like, if you, he don't have handles on the back of his chair. Like he's not capable of it. There is no pushing his ass. Even if he's struggling going up a hill, you don't fucking push his ass, bro. That that'd be like me pushing you up a hill. You'd be like, fuck off me, bro. I can walk. No, up I this get hill. that hundred percent. Yeah, so Poland's getting pushed back by the Serena Williams and fucking me and <laughs> me and Raska and all the boys were all like, Yeah, hell yeah we started yelling parkour parkour because you know she's going to be climbing all over the chair like parkour you know <laughs> so that's a running joke with Poland. and then one day i'm at my mom's house to transition from being in a strip club straight off into my mom's house but i'm at my mom's house and she goes you've been hanging out with a kid named michael Poland a lot i said yeah and i said it's a buddy of mine uh we race a lot together you know he came out to vegas for a while and we had a good time she goes, you know, you're related to some Polans. I wonder if he knows Sid and Nancy Poland. I was like, I don't know. She's like, well, you just ask him the next time you see him. I said, fuck that. I'm calling him right now. Hey, fucker, you know Sid and Nancy? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's my uncle. And I'm like, oh, okay, but yeah, we're related. And my mom's like, you oh, guys no. are, oh my gosh, y'all are second or third or fourth cousins or something. And I'm oh, like, no. oh, that's cool. So turns out <laughs> me and Poland are actually blood cousins in a way. I don't really have any idea how, but yeah, so it turns out one of your close buddies you're actually related to. You know, I thought that only happened in Arkansas, but <laughs> apparently, apparently it's a Texas thing too. Oh my God. It happens. But yeah, Poland's great, dude. So tell me the story of how you got a hold of Billy down there. Why? What motivated you to go see him, like, and start talking, collaborating? Like, so we just got back from right before we went to Vegas. So backtrack a little bit. We went to film. I got invited by Barrett Green, Big Hat Mafia, which a lot of these guys are going to know who Big Hat Mafia is. Barrett Green and Michael Hollis invited me to run against the 405 and this is like July. So we go run against uh, the 405 and this is like their local show, you know, small tire. Mm-hmm. And uh, I gap Doc, by the way, ran right out of his life and whomped him before the you finish did the line. stupid racer whomp thing. <laughs> it's not stupid if it, I mean, it was before the finish line. So after the finish line, yeah, I'm just bragging. But before the finish line, this is a show of dominance. <laughs> Get on your belly, that's what I said. Get on your belly. Anyhow, so needless to say, and then Doc tried to call me out at Outlaw Armageddon and then seen my next pass and was like, oh, transmissions, Kevin, it's the missions now. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 exactly. You, you want to call me out when I'm on hard tires, but then I put my radios back on and go bust somebody's ass. You, Oh, now you got transmissions. Yeah, okay, yeah, good luck with that, bud. You know, and... Uh, <laughs> So, all right, now we got past the doc situation. We're going to Fastest in America. Mike Abney brings me into the office, 
and he says, you know, hey, Mike Abney's the COO of Not Just Express. You know, he's my boss. And he says, uh, we really want you to work here. And, you know, we're willing to make you an offer. And what do you think of this? And it's like, nope. It's like, what do you mean now? It's like, nah, I'm not going to work for an hourly wage. So I was like, figure out a way to make, make it work where I don't have to work hourly and I'm in. And he's like, we don't do non-hourly wage. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know, I was already sponsored by Nitrous Express at this point. I got sponsored by them in a podunk town called Nakona, Texas, when I outrun one of the guys that works there a few times. And then, you know, they came to me and was like, hey, we'd like to help you out with your program. You know, you seem like a cool kid. At that point, I had never won a single event ever. Not a 650, not a nothing. And then the second I got sponsored by Nitrous Express, I won 14 events that year. Hmm. It's like, so part of that's probably the confidence of having a manufacturer like that support you. And then part of that is the friends and the family that I've made there, you know, and their support. So part of it's the people, part of it's the manufacturer part, you know, but um, they bring me on. They say, you're, you know, manufacturer's representative now. Your job is literally just grow the business as best you can. You'll work off commission. Cool. All right, bet I'm in. So I just got back from Vegas, I think. It may have been before Vegas. I don't know. I th in this story, the way I'm going to tell it this time, <laughs> I just got back from Vegas. So right, next time I may modify that. But we had just got back from Fastest in America. And uh, Billy, I think in a creeper way, I think he posted something on Facebook or... No, you know what it was? Somebody had posted a photo of you in a local smoke local group chat. They're like, look who's here. And it's some dude and he's heavy breathing. It's like, dude, that's weird because... <laughs> that's weird. I was, when he was there, um, I was scrolling through YouTube shorts. And somebody did a one minute long interview with him as he's like fucking coming out of the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Billy's like, like coming out of the bathroom, like putting his fly up. Yeah. And this guy's like, hey, Billy, you got some, uh, some time to answer some of my questions? And Billy's just like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Did so a little interview. It was on my YouTube shorts. Like, if he would have said no, then that would have been the spin. Billy, the kid, too, you know, he's too, too big. big. He's yeah. too big. He forgot where he'd come from. So there's no winning, but go yeah. ahead. Proceed. Yeah. So he, uh, some way, somehow, you know, we all know Jake's race is a huge deal uh, in the South. It really, nationwide, if you're into radial racing, Big Jake's race is a bucket list race. You've got to be at that. I went to like, one of his races way back. Uh, it was Bear Fest at Darlington. Yeah, Bear Fest. Went yep. to one of those, and that was like my first big radial race. Yeah. It, so, it wasn't wild. hard for Tony to talk me into going to that one. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it was actually you and Molly were there yeah. that time. So, and then I, I see Molly yesterday. She's like, I've seen you somewhere before, though. I was like, yeah, at Jake's race a yeah. year and a half, two years ago, whatever it was. Anyhow, so they, they say, you know, you represent the company now. Uh, you get paid commission. Okay, whatever, cool. I see Billy at XRP. I'm like, look, Mike, do you watch this? He's like, no. What is it? I was like, look, this these kids got a YouTube channel. They're really successful. They're really good at what they do. And we need to be a part of this. He said, yo, if you think that we need to be a part of it, then go for it. Tear ass. So I think I showed up. I had hats, not just kids. Yeah. I actually had reached out to some people local to like maybe get me in touch with you already. I think we had already talked before I got there. I might have talked to my dad. But the way I like to tell the story, I just walked up to him and was like, Hey, man, how you doing, man? I'm Tom Gunner. Nice to meet you, man. And, uh, Pretty much. We had, a, we had a short phone call. Uh, yeah, a short tell. phone call, yeah. And I was and like, then, oh, I'll see you at the track, you know. We started talking at the track, and, you know, I got my, my buddy JoJo over there. He's got the fajitas going. <laughs> We're having some beers. We're cutting up. And Billy's like, oh, these guys aren't actually half bad. You know, it was cool. When I thought, like, I was gonna meet the Nitrous Express guys. I figured it was gonna be like some like real formal thing, and like you guys are gonna be in suits or something. I remember like, him telling no. me he was like, "Yeah," I was like, "He was like, like yeah." These guys are like super, just normal. Like, <laughs> I remember when he was telling me about it. He's like, he called me while he was in Texas. He's like, "Yeah, we're gonna work with Nitrous Express." I was like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. He's like, yeah. Some like young kids, like, like I don't know, you yeah, acted like you were like really young, and I was like, This is 
not what I expected. It's just normal Johnny's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, me and Balake, <laughs> which the Balake. OGs of the channel will remember Balake. And R.I.P. Balake, he's no longer with us. He's still alive, <laughs> but... <laughs> he's still alive, but he ain't at Nachos Express anymore. You know, now he's just closet hating on Facebook, but... Really? Damn. Oh, I mean, hey, that's what this platform's for, right? Balake, I see you closet hating, dog. I still love you, okay? I know you're going to be watching this, We got your eye on you, Balake. Yeah, we're watching you, Balake. Okay, the Wish version of me. Yeah, 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 it's the Wish version of you at (laughs) PRI. Anyhow, yeah, again, I met Billy. Um, We end up cutting up there for a second, and then later in the night... Like, the race is so crazy and so big. The staging lanes are completely jam-packed all the way out. You know, you've been to XRP. All the way mm-hmm. back through the pits, all the way through the pits. So, like, if you're with a car, you're waiting hours to run. And it's just kind of the nature of the beast. you got 300 cars on the property and all these cars in these classes. So, we had a, a practice tree. We had a practice out. tree grudge shootout. And I called Billy. I was like, yo, we're over here gambling on the practice tree. Come on. Stay he came us. down there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you met some more local homies down there. Yep. Michael Hollis. I'm going to blast him because. Trey Oliver, I think was over Trey, there. <laughs> Trey Oliver. I've, I've met him at the pad before. Okay. So, I yeah. Him. All these, you know, local guys to me who are big names in the local scene. They're all over there, and we're all cutting up with Billy and just enjoying each other's company and whatnot. And and Trey, I think, was a little intimidated because he said some fucking rude ass shit. And I was like, <laughs> I call him out on it. He's like, "What the fuck, man? He's fucking uh, whatever." So me and Trey are always giving each other a really hard time. But the the whole joke of it is, Hollis is blasted. He was drunk as fuck, and we're all sitting there trying to win this tree race you know it's a reaction time deal we all got twenty dollars in and hollis is smeared fucking everybody up <laughs> he's just like he's ah, ah, ah. yeah. got his cup you know he's all fucking crazy looking and shit <laughs> i'm like what the fuck dude so it goes from like five dollars first round hollis wins next round 20 all right let's do twenty dollars ahead Hollis wins. All right, and then I don't know if it was, I think it was you, but it may have been Hollis. One of them's like, all right, $100 ahead. And I'm like, yep, pull the shoots. Woo, I'm out. <laughs> I'm good. But Billy's in, right? So, boom, Hollis won again, I think. Yeah. It was like, oh my God, dude. And he was shit face drunk. <laughs> and he won the whole damn That's thing three times is. in a row. Yeah, so that was a good time cutting up with Billy. A week or so goes by. Uh, me and the old man are getting together for putting a nitrous kid on the Malibu, I think is what it was, right? Yeah. And this motherfucker messaged me, and <laughs> you're going to have to mute this the way I'm going to say it, though. Just do it. I don't care. Yeah, this, so this man messages me. I, I call him. He doesn't answer. So I text him. I'm like, hey, this is Tom with Nitrous Express. And <laughs> he's like, who's this green bubble ass? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, well, I want to have a blue bubble, but we're too busy sponsoring shaky motherfuckers like you. <laughs> and then he called me. He's like, who the hell is this? And I was like, it's Tom, bro. And he's like, who's Tom? He's like, oh, Nitrous Express. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nitrous Express, whatever. You know, we're just on each other's ass from day one, bro. Day one, me and the old man are on each other's ass. And now here it is. It seems it's over a year for sure. Yeah. And, you motivated me to start a YouTube channel and that's obviously done pretty hot and been a good friend of mine and we talk every day now, multiple times a day. Seems like I catch him on the show. Closer than we are. Uh, You've gotten yelled at. I've gotten yelled at. Yeah, the old man is yelling at me for telling Tommy to do whatever you want to do. That's the key to happiness, Tommy. Do whatever you want to do your whole life. And the old man is like, Jimmy, shut up And then (laughs) You don't know what the key to happiness is. And I'm over here laughing at him, which only made him ten times meaner. He was only <laughs> more aggravated and pissed off because he's over here like, quit laughing. I'm like, yeah, okay, bud. <laughs> All right, dude. And he was steaming that day. But to his defense, yeah. You guys so- almost broke up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We broke up for 30 minutes, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's out there. He had to go take a drive. He had to take a drive, yeah. The way I tell the story, he got in the Malibu and floored it, and the belt was all squeaking. <laughs> Does. No, you know, no, it wasn't. No. But in my story, in I get to story. tell it how I want. Yeah, yeah, and then he peeled out of the driveway and almost hit the mailbox. Something. What? <laughs> it's my story. I get to tell it how I want in my story. Well, you can hear. You can tell the story your way when it's your podcast. All right. But yeah. So buddy. look, I'm, we're not going to go through it all. But it all started with me asking about one of Jimmy Dale's spark plug. He's got a spark plug tattoo. I asked him about his fucking tattoo, and it spiraled into... There, boy. It, there, boy. He said, Dad, would you still love me if I had a tattoo? I was messing... Okay, so look. My father had a reason to be angry that day. It was a stressful day. A lot of shit going on. We're getting the garage built, and there was shit just going wrong left and right. So he had a reason. That, that day was just not the day to fuck with them. And I found that out pretty quick. We all did. There's probably not a lot of days that you can fuck with them. Like no, that, there's honest. not. You sh- probably should just not. If you can have the decision, just don't fuck with my dad. But, yeah. so it, It's, it's it, different when it's you. Okay. You're, okay, so. you're the golden boy. He done my, already fucked up. I really so. need you to fucking toe the line, okay? We've had this discussion. <laughs> no pressure. I can't, my I can't road, go down another Billy Avenue. My chain is so much shorter than everyone else's, I swear. Tommy wouldn't look right with tattoos anyways. Well, I don't want a tattoo. I was just fucking with him. I think he was going to serious. But <clears throat> or, I think let's not rekindle this conversation. <laughs> See? See? He's look, already, he's already getting, steaming. He's steaming. You no, better I, move what on. What am I steaming about? No, I'm not. We well, better move on. <laughs> I don't want this to happen. So, again. Don't worry. So, don't worry. We're moving on. We're moving so Jimmy, on. Jimmy says, after the tattoo thing, Jimmy says, the key to happiness, Tommy, is just to do whatever you want in life. Do what makes you happy, buddy. And Dad goes, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he's like... <laughs> So pissed. It is. So we started the podcast off talking about the whole reason we do all this stuff we do is so you have the freedom, like yeah. the freedom to do whatever it is you want to do. But that, that doesn't mean, you know, go do, uh, well, we can't say it how we normally would say it, but don't, don't go start an OnlyFans tomorrow. But uh, did, I, did I cross the line there? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's got an OnlyFans. This is a podcast for another day, maybe, you know? But, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because two years from now. We'll I don't want to go down this alley. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to go too far down this alley right now, but I'll just say that I had a lot invested in Billy. Like, I invested everything I had in helping him get started. And there's a lot of ways that that fucking train could have come off the tracks and rolled down a ravine into a shit river <laughs> that... <laughs> That led straight to purgatory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it seems like every day there was another another avenue, another off ramp to Billy's path to success that leads to a shit mess but every after day. After yesterday, you should really see that the train's back on the track. You know what I mean? You no, should. It's it's really good right I mean, now. Like I told him the other day, I'm like, I, I feel happy for the first time in a long time. I can feel it as as your buddy. I can tell you're happy right now. You're calling me about new ideas, and you're, like, not taking no for an answer. Oh, I don't know if that'll work, really. You're like, Dude, shut up, Jim. Shit's going to work. It's got to work. We're doing it. Of course it's going to work. There's just a lot of stress for the last five or six years. I mean, a lot. Well, the last two's been brutal. Brutal. I don't know about before that, but last two's been gnar. Like, a few months ago, like, the last couple months, uh, getting the shop built, I think, was stressful for everybody because... Like, there was a, you know, there's a few things, like, there's so many regulations and shit to get the shop built and have it all legal, and, like, everybody, there's people coming out and, like, inspecting shit, and I remember one day, they were doing the footers for... The posts. The posts. And, uh, you know, I showed up later in the afternoon after everything kind of cleared up, but, like, I remember I came to the house, and Dad's in the chair, and he's just, like, fucking stressed out. I literally fell asleep in my chair from a stress... Yeah, anxiety. And I could tell. I felt bad because um, he was. They were like, they. He was afraid that these footers weren't going to pass fucking inspection or whatever. And we like, had seventy thousand dollars worth of material delivered here. Right. Mm-hmm. There's seventy thousand dollars worth of material laying on the ground out here, and my Amish builder out here says, you know, these holes aren't going to pass, 
And if they don't pass, they're going to tell you, you can't build a barn here. Right. And I don't have anywhere else to build a barn. So. And the backstory on it is that there was a bunch of broken concrete at some point, And then he was like, I'll just bury the concrete here. <laughs> and that's 15 years ago. He doesn't ever realize that. But yeah, 15, 20 years from now, I'm going to have two sons. We're no, going to no, be no, in no, a no, YouTube no, no, channel no, no, no. for this a was, I'm going to need to build a no, This is 100% part of the plan. So run a dump truck. I'm, and I've always got spoil material. We call it spoil material. Okay, got Dirt it. and gravel and just a bunch of stuff all mixed together. We haul off. And I had dug a pond back there. It's too close to the creek. It won't hold water. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to build a level pad here so that someday we can build a shop. Right? And I always... In my personal experience, the, the post holes need to be dug three feet deep. So they're below the frost line. So I made sure if there's any broken concrete, it was at least 36 inches. Well, guess what? They changed <laughs> They changed the uh, bylaw subsection C of yeah. post hole digging. And now they have to be uh, five feet deep. <laughs> that puts me at a two foot deficit. So, so they get down there, and there's a bunch of broken oh, concrete dude, there is, three feet under the there's dirt. There's rebar, like, there's busted concrete, there's just anything and everything that I needed to get rid of off job sites, yeah. it's in there. Billy and Tommy's childhood. <laughs> that was a ditch digging joke. <laughs> I don't know if anybody got that one. <laughs> Not bad, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you got to get on a plane. I do. What time is it? It's, it's time to. Six. It's time to pull the shoots on yeah, this one, boys. Better up. Be you ready to pull the shoots? Woo! I'm gonna go watch the Phillies game. Nah, this well, is our best one so far. We already pulled really? the shoots. I, had, good. I liked all the stories we talked about. We didn't have to talk about fucking small tire rules because people are getting tired of that. Oh, so I was tired of that before we started talking. I don't yeah, even I give a yeah, shit. I think we managed to avoid that. 100%. I don't even care anymore. I did yeah, tell I mean, everybody that next episode we would talk about uh, no prep cars with no front ends just to piss everybody off. I don't even want to talk about that. I, I know. We're just joking. About that. I but, totally... that, but it's like almost like a so many other people have beat that subject to death. It's like, eh, I think you just keep doing what you're doing. So I posted uh, yesterday, I posted a one minute short of our last podcast with Ryan McCoy, mm -hmm. and it was the last part. We, he said something funny about Cletus's Corvette not <laughs> doing the record. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I posted it because I knew it would get, you know. He said yeah. it was actually a world-class, world record bouncer. rock yeah. rock bouncer. I actually, <laughs> so I posted it knowing that, like, it was a hot topic, trying to get, you know. For sure it is. Yeah, it's all flown the, to the Cletus page. fans on Got it. all the Cletus fans. So now everybody's like, we want to see Mullet versus the Nova, which I think that's awesome. But, like, I even got, get, Garrett got on there. From his personal page and he's commenting he's like either way it's a piece of shit so hopefully he doesn't think i'm like a hater or nothing no, like, I, I think he's Garrett really called billy's nova a piece of shit no 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 no. he's oh. talking about his corvette oh uh, hayden no. was saying that cletus is exactly like us but that when he's filming and all his filming stuff that he puts out he's super polished right so then you kind of get this idea like oh he's kind of uptight he's like no doc he's like a frat guy I never got out of college. <laughs> I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, bro. We're in the Waffle House, and we're fucking shit-faced, and we're hooting and hollering and yelling at the waitress. Nice things, but still just like acting. Waffle like, House, anything Waffle goes. House, and they're Waffle House, and at 3 in the morning. There's, there's a little bit of that about me, too. Like, if you watch my videos. A little uptight. Not uptight, but like. Not uptight. Proper. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. You should Real see how many stiff. times he redoes his voiceovers. Oh, that's what we talked about yesterday. I said, well, you got your voiceovers down where you can just... Can like, you please nah. do one video where you don't redo voiceovers, where you leave in the, God damn it, fuck, <laughs> fuck. I should do that. Damn it. I should do that like at the end of the video. Where you'd be oh, like... That would be great. That would be great. Sunday, I God went to... God dang it, scrappers. <laughs> Sunday, I damn went to... Damn dogs. Who the hell's here now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Vicky, just, close the damn yeah. door. Shut that <laughs> car off. Yeah, but it's all like Vicky's really nice videos. footage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the ice in the fridge. Fuck that ice oh, in the fridge. Sunday, bro. I went to old. Jersey Mike's with the dogs. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot the line. <laughs> Shit like that. That'd be awesome. Or just do a blooper video. Oh, that would be great, dude. That would be so good.